Hello and welcome to another episode of Back to the Future of the Game, Volume 2. And last time, I remember, we just started off Volume 2. So, what happened was, um, we sort of fixed the timeline. <laughs> but in Back to the Future, do you really fix the timeline? Do you? So, what I'm doing now, as we speak, I still gotta do this. I'll do that sometime this week. Do this as well. As I'm getting my notes ready, I'm just. There we go. I'm just making sure I have everything that there is I need to have in front of me. Especially where we're going to, we're going to better times, simpler times. We're going to the 80s. Ah, yeah, we all remember the 80s, don't we? When Nintendo and Sega were the only two big kids around. Thursday. May 15th, 1986. So, time to go back home. Hey, anyone home? There's something wrong with my key. Please, not now. Tomorrow. Give me another day. Wait, what? Another day? Dad, what are you talking about? Marty. No, that's impossible. Marty was run out of town. I've uh, got a bad feeling about this. Me too. What are you talking about? What's the matter, Dad? Are you in trouble or something? This is a trick. Go away. Leave us alone. Haven't we suffered enough? Mom. Uh... Mom, it's Marty, Mom. Open up. It sounds like Marty. This must be a trick. The Mom! Hell? Go away. Shame on you. How can I convince you? Tell me something. Only Marty will know. Ah. It doesn't matter what you say. The first time he kissed Mom, it was at the enchantment under the sea dance. Or... That's right. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Lord, what are you waiting for, George? Let him in! Stupid lock. Marty! Oh, my God, Dad. What, what happened to you? What do you think happened, butthead? This. <laughs> I thought we told you to stay out of town, shrimp. Yeah. Whatever's know. going on, I'm sure we can handle <laughs> it. Um. Reasonably. Um. Who are they? Like you don't know Cliff and Rip. What? What do you think we should do with them, baby bro? What we should have done years ago, big bro. What? I'm going to enjoy this, McFly. Wait, wait, I'm trying to process here. Um... Where did these other tannins come from? From a mommy tannin and a daddy tannin. It's called the birds and the bugs, butthead! Nope! I got a question. When did I get run out of town? Two years ago. Don't you remember? We made a deal that we'd go easier on your old man if you left. But now you're back. So the kid gloves can come off. Oof. Nope. Hey! And another thing. Why are you guys so pissed at me? You don't remember? 
You've really lost it, McFly. Take back the thing with the manure truck. What? Which one? Tell me. Why can't you pick on somebody else? We do. We pick on lots of guys. It's kind of our thing. I still don't understand. How long have you been coming down to my dad like this? Ever since that school dance, when Georgie laid Biff out in the parking lot. What? Uh, shut up. It's not funny. Someone messes with the Tannen family, the Tannen family never lets him forget about it. And another thing. What are you guys doing here, anyway? that time of the month. Uh, and for Georgie to pay up, we usually take the payment in cash. But this month, we can take it out of your hide. Ooh. And another thing. Ooh, can we bury the hatchet already? Even better idea. I bury this nine iron up your backside. Does all this have something to do with Kid Tannen? Huh? What about him? He was supposed to end up in jail. Jail? Pop's never spent a day in jail in his life. The Tannen gang's the fifth most dangerous crime family in California. We got connections all over the place. Only in that universe. No way. You don't believe me? Man, no! The man with the golden eye? Hey! Ha <laughs> ha! Check it out. Your family from mine. In gratitude for your continued service, J.J. Valenti. It's Don Valenti, godfather of the Sacramento mob. What? The third most dangerous crime family in California. Uh, nope. To this day, he still doesn't believe it. So, the one thing we gotta do is we gotta go to the alleyway as soon as we get back to where we're supposed to be. by his mole, the singer named Pixie Trotter. It's that hot babe I saw coming out of the speakeasy. Exactly. When she does, history says Tanner will be arrested by a rookie cop by the name of Danny Parker. Parker? Parker? Hey, do you think 
think he's related to Jennifer Parker, my girlfriend? Could be. Eddie. In any event, somehow we've changed history so that neither of these events happens. Condemning your family to generations of abuse at the hands of a Tannen crime family. You need to go back into Tannen speakeasy, find out what's going on, and get Kid Tannen arrested. No problem, Jack. Let me just put on my hat and I'm good to go. Is the mustache really necessary? It's essential. You can't let kid know that you're the same troublemaker that foiled his attempt to kill me. Are you sure you can't come in with me? It's far too dangerous. You may be easy to disguise with your nondescript features, but ever since my daring escape from the police and the mob, my distinctive face has been plastered over every paper from here to Reno. I'm distressed. Well, I'll find a safe place to hunker down. That flop house ought to fit the bill. You can find me there if you need me. The majestic gun. But not, but right now, we have to get to the alleyway. Pardon me, sir. From the way you're dressed and your general aura of seediness, I can infer only one thing. You're heading for Tannen Speakeasy. Am I right? Uh, yeah. Can't you tell me the way? Down. Straight down. The last stop before the inferno. Well, okay. Thanks. Unfortunately, I don't have the power to stop you, but I beg you to tarry here a few more seconds and listen to my song. Me, 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 me. Up here? Oh, God, no. You save up to self-respect what you should care. Um! What in heaven's name? Well, now. I'm sorry, Miss Strickland. Just a little experimental prototype gone momentarily awry. Mr. Brown, why is there a dog in that vehicle? Um. Why? Oh, well, yeah. to advance the human condition, of course. Yeah. Um. Hello, oh, Sonny. Sonny? Mr. Crockett, what are you doing in that getup? I'm going undercover. How exciting! You'll have to give me an exclusive sometime. Right now, I've got some souls to save. Oh, of and course. you'll have to get an eyeful of my newest experiment. You're not angry about the rocket drill? Water over the bridge. I've moved on to bigger and better things. Come by the gazebo when you get a chance. I'll be setting up. Lovely. You won't believe what I and I have been up to. Famous last words. All right. Now, where's that speakeasy? Well... Um, <laughs> I got nothing after that, you know, just, just blow, the, blow that fucker up and just like, nope, nope, I don't want to hear that shit. Well, about this big easy, we just walk down the alleyway like so. Who sent you? Ulysses S. Grant. What did you bring me? Meat and potatoes. What's the word? Words are for wimps. One moment while I get my notes ready for this one. Be right back. Okay, so with this one, as you can tell, in order to get in, you have to do the following. Remember who framed Roger Rabbit? You gotta give a punchline. That's all you have to do. And you have to say it in a way that it's supposed to make sense. Like the last syllable of this question has to be the same syllable in the first syllable of the response. So, let's go to the door. Who said you were worthy? Who said I was worthy? The old gray mare. The old gray mare? What will you do tomorrow? <laughs> Wait. Row my boat? Where oh. do you hang your hat? 
Where do I hang my hat? I don't think that's up there. Hattiesburg. Hattiesburg. Welcome to L Kids, sir. That made no sense, even though that was not on there when I was looking at. My cheat sheet did not have that one. I had to, like, where do I hang my hat? Hattiesburg. Now that we're inside. We have to meet some people. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to once again present the hottest little number this side of the Rockies. And when I say my pleasure, I think you all know what I'm talking about, am I right? So let's have a big L kid welcome for the one, the only, Trixie Trotter. Out of my way, kid. I got some sorrows to drown. Guess what we had to talk to? something sad. About those troubles, sir. Danny. You. Every cloud must have so about those troubles, they all started on uh, uh, June 14th. I was chasing down one of Tannen's boys when this, uh, this car, straight out of Buck Rogers, popped up out of nowhere and 
ran my car off the road. No. Then later, I, I lost track of a witness. The poor schlub hadn't been heard from since. That wasn't your fault. And then, to top it off, I somehow managed to lose custody of an 80-year-old arsonist. And not one, but two of those godforsaken space cars showed up and whisked him away. That's unbelievable. That's what the chief said. Demoted me on the spot. Damn. My family sent me to a psych psychiatrist because they thought I was seeing things. And worst of all, my gal Betty left me. Because she thinks I'm a bad provider and a head case. Damn. <laughs> Betty? As in Jennifer's grandma, Betty? <laughs> what? Listen, Danny, it's really important that you get back together with Betty. Ah, oh, that's just sales. What the heck with her? I got a little secret that'll set me up with women twice as classy as Betty will ever be. Oh, boy. See you later, Danny. I'll be here. Not like you got a choice, man. Well, we need something more attuned to secrets. I'm surprised he hasn't seen the dude change up the change up the music like that. Get it. 
costume shop at the mall. Uh, I, I had it custom made. Yeah? Quality material. Who are you? Where are you from? The name's, uh, Sonny Crockett. Nobody. I mean, you don't know me. I, I come from a, a very different place. Come on. What's the dope? Spill it or I'll go easy, kid. From the cut of the suit, I'm thinking he might be with the Valenti gang. Is that so? Uh, yes? Prove it. You ain't leaving until you show me some bona fides. Bona fides? Bona fides? <laughs> bona fides? Bona fides, really? Louis the Louse, squashed in his prime. something here that might convince you. Don't even blink. It's not a real gun. It's not a real gun, I swear. It's a gift from Don Valenti. See? To your family from mine, in gratitude for your continued service, J.J. Valenti. Looks like little Sonny Crockett here really is with the Sacramento boys. You got stones, Pee-wee. I like that. Have yourself a drink. On the house. Matches. Put down your gun. You look like a moron. <sighs> down, boy. I I I'm gonna leave. Bye. Hey, Artie. He's back. So, next thing we do. Doc is all set up in the Majestic Arms. Well, let's talk to Edna. Hey, Edna. Oh, Mr. Crockett, what can I do for you? What was that song you were singing earlier? Do you like it? I wrote it myself. It really gets the toes tapping at the Stay Sober Society meetings. Although I suppose that could be the shakes. Would you like to hear it again? Uh, sure. I knew if I waited long enough, somebody would request it. You say you've lost your self-respect, but you should care. It's not too late to redirect and start to care. Don't despise the good and pure. Ugh. Time to rise up from the sewer. Wash off so all that foul manure. Oh. Show the world you care. You should care. You should care. What people think of you. A goal that you could name reclaiming. Your good name is what you want to do. You should care. You should care. If your reputation is in disrepair, it's no good to hurt you to reclaim your virtue for you. Should you? Oh, catchy. You <clears throat> really think so? Yeah, it's uh got a good hook to it. One needs a good hook if one is fishing for souls. <laughs> uh, do you have a copy of that? I think I could have a copy of your You Should Care lyrics. I've uh, got a club of my own that could really use some inspiring. Sure. Let me just get a page out of the hymnal. There you are. Well, okay. Hey, thanks. <laughs> See ya. Keep fighting the good fight. 
So, guess what we gotta do? We gotta go all the way back to the speakeasy. Welcome back, sir. Looks like Parker's still parked. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, so, let's use that. And switch that for this. Hey, Trixie, look over there. Why? Trick. Didn't you see it? No. Ah, uh, never mind. And the last thing we can do is swap that out for You Should Care. I can turn my life around. Sure you can. You know what? I used to be a good cop. And yeah, I've had a few bad breaks. Possibly even a psychotic one that caused me to imagine a disappearing space car. But I'm a good man. Yeah. And all I need to do to win Betty back is be the same good man I always was. And let the chips fall where they may. Good man. All right. So now what? Now I wait. Wait for the moment to take down Kid Tannen, restore my good name, and win back the heart of Betty Lipinski. Hold that thought. I bet that moment is just around the corner. And you know what? That's a good time for us to stop right here. So in the next part, we're going to do some more triggering. Chrono triggering, that is. Stay tuned for more of Back to the Future of the Game right after this. Thanks so much for watching.